about uh, this Sunday is Intoma Sunday. You, we can speak about many, many uh, topics in this week, but I, I'm thinking of one thing that really impacted me recently. Was Thomas real or fake? Was Thomas, can Thomas, he was real or he was fake? He was real for sure. Why he was real? He was honest. Why he was very real? Why he was he was he hypocritical? Can be go shame or if if he was is he or if he was fake and handling question upper room? You have a question? Objection. <laughs> he he didn't believe, but. Now, many of us don't, don't believe something. But what he was real, because he exposed himself, he said, you know what? I, I'm not going to be fake. I will tell you what's going in my heart, and I will tell you, you know what? I, I don't believe. If I didn't put my finger in his, in the place of the nails, and my hand in the place of the, in his sight, I will not believe. He was real in exposing himself and exposing his shortcomings. It is unbelievably Strange when you go and you um, and and you you see what's going on now around us. The percentage of teenagers who identify themselves as atheists, teenagers who like, hey, we don't believe in God, is double that of the general population. The amount of kids, youth, growing up now. This is this is statistics. This is statistics. The, the percentage of teenagers who are identify themselves as atheists are double that percentage of the general population. This data is consistent with the historical data of youth leaving the church. 52% of college students reported that they were attending church in high school. After one year of college, 29 of them are saying we are attending regularly in church. Another data is, is speaking that from 50 to 70 percent of young Christians walk away from the church by the time they are in their college year. 50 to 70 percent, they leave the church. And when they ask them, what is the reason? And I, I'm returning back to being real. Being real is a key. Because if we are fake, if I have doubt in my heart, if I have questions unanswered, if I have something that is really bothering me, I recall when I was in middle school and high school, I used to go to the monastery and they had a list, a very long list of questions. And I have the questions written in a piece of paper and they have it in my pocket. And every time I saw a monk, I, I, I asked the monk, do you have a few minutes? He said, oh, sure. And they put him in a corner and they hit my paper, and they keep asking him, asking him, asking him, asking him, as much as they could. Some of the questions were answered, some of the questions were never answered. But the whole point is, when we have unanswered questions, it is very, we, we put the persona, we put the fake st things in front of mom and dad, you know what, and I have this local deacon in the heart, I will be a deacon, I will be, uh, you will have thumbs up, I will be your good boy or good girl, I will be Mr. or Mrs. Perfect, and I have no problems. What is really happening here is very alarming. 50 to 70 percent of young Christians walk away from the church by the time you are in their college years. This is very common inside of the church and outside of the church. When they ask the kids why, why do you leave the church? One of the, some of the answers. Some stuff is too far fetched for me to believe. That's too much. Too many questions that cannot be answered. I am a scientist now and I don't believe in miracles. This is what they are saying. I learned about evolution when I went away to college and uh, it makes sense. There is a lack of any sort of scientific or specific evidence of a creator. They keep saying this. I'm doing a lot more learning and studying kind of making, and kind of making decision myself rather than listening to someone else or the Bible. I, I am, I'm smart enough and I can do it. And some of them said, 
I have hard time believing God because there are too many injustices and too many. I, I had a bad experience at church and or with Christians. I had a bad experience in the church or with Christians. So I said, you know what? Forget about Christianity from all from the from the get go. Those are real people answering real questions. But the whole point is, are we real enough to admit that we have a shortage, we have a challenge that we need to address, we have a problem that we need to reach out or no? Many of, of those youth, they said we have questions that are unanswered. Many of them, they said this. So what can we do? Be real. Be real. Be real and face the issues and name the issues as it is. Because if we kept going around the bush and uh, cutting corners and pretending that we are the perfect uh, denomination or perfect church or perfect uh, group of youth or perfect abuna or perfect life, this is not real. And this is going, unfortunately, hurting the younger generations who are growing with us. So number one, be real. R E A L. Are you there or am I lost you? R stands for be real. If I have shortcomings, if I have doubts, there was a monk who went to his father of confession for years telling him, Abuna, Halimi, I'm so sorry, please absorb me, I am, uh, I'm having bad thoughts. Years and years and years, and Abuna is praying for him. And that after many years, the bad thoughts are still there and not, nothing has changed. So, Abuna asked him, are you progressing? Are there any improvement? He told him, no, unfortunately, Abuna, it is the same. So, his father of confession told him, can you expose, can you share with me what are those the, the bad thoughts? He told him, I feel very bad because it is, uh, you cannot think of, 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 of a monk who is thinking bad thoughts like this. I would have told him, unless you expose it, it will never be. You cannot conquer what you cannot confront. You cannot conquer, you cannot conquer what you cannot confront. So I would have told him, you need to, it's your choice, but I, my recommendation is that you expose what is this uh, bad thoughts that you are having. And he had bad thoughts against the saints, and he was extremely shy and embarrassed to say that I have negative thoughts against the saints. And the day he exposed himself, and he was real, and he said, you know what, Abuna, this is it, this is what is going on, please forgive me. Those thoughts are not troubling him anymore, and it was gone. So R4, R4, real. E for examine. Examine what is being said. Because in many, many times, what are said around us, or the thing, the culture and the media is speaking about tons of lies that has nothing to do with real uh, or, or reality or truth. If it feels good, then do it. Is this is a true statement? Is it, this is real? No. Uh, if people who are cohabitating together before marriage, they will have better marriage than people who never live together. Is this is true? No, the research is saying no. The, peop the rate of divorce of people who are cohabitating is much more than the rate of divorce of people who stayed and lived a pure life. And then when they got married, they lived in together. Examine, examine the things that is around us because if, if the news is saying something, then you take it and you make it halal. This is, this is it. So R for real, be real. Numbers E, examine. A, ask. If you have questions that is unanswered, ask. Don't be shy and don't say no one, because no one is going to answer. Or, e, I promise you, if I don't have the answer, I will do my due diligence to get you the answer, and if there is no answer, I will turn back to you and tell you not. I, I don't have answer for this question, but let me... I will, I will tell you, uh, I received a text from someone doing uh, a great research about something in the history uh, that is mentioned in the Bible, and he is uh, very knowledgeable in writing the numbers and doing the calculations and, 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 and saying, you know what, this doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense, and I don't know what's going on. Then I, I kept searching for this topic 
about this guy, I didn't have answers. Then I reached out to one of the owners and I told them, uh, I'm stuck with the answer on this question. I don't know if you have a, like a, a scientific answer or a, a more accurate answer for, to answer this guy. And the woman told me, did the resurrection happen or not? This question is in the Old Testament. I told him, Abura, this answer has nothing to do with the question that I'm asking. He told me, no, there will be a lot of things that sometimes we don't have a clear, very clear answer. But the, the anchor, I will marvel to for us, the anchor of Christianity is resurrection. Did the resurrection happen or not? And when you go in this path, then God is real, then God rose from that, then maybe our mind cannot comprehend many things, but this will not ever shake us. So R stands for real E, examine and make sure that what you have heard is true. A, ask and don't be shy and live faithfully. Because when we are in the time of doubts and confusion, what will be the first thing the devil will be telling, you know what, we don't know God is there or not there, let me live my life, let me enjoy this, let me party and drink and do this and that and that and that and that. And when my questions are answered, I will, I will return back to God. There was this story, my father of confession in Egypt told me that happened with him personally. A deacon started going astray from the church, then he uh, he didn't come to church at all. All Sunday school uh, servants going to him. No, 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 forget about this, forget about this, forget about this. Bad friends started smoking, then started drinking, then started on drugs, on hardcore drugs. And then Abuna told him, he went to him in his home and he told him, uh, we miss you in the church. We, uh, yeah, we love you and want you to be back. And he told him, Abuna, I heard this in many sermons. God is not going to take your life in the worst time of your life. He will take your life when in the best time. your life in the best time. Because in the funerals, many times we as preachers or abunas, we say, no, oh, it was a perfect time for this person who God took his life in this perfect time. And he's telling Abuna, no, 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 and to, you told us this. So since I am in this path, God will never take my life because I'm still not in my best time. So Abuna told him, but Ananias and Sapphira, Hanania and Sapphira, they were not in their best time when, when God took their life. And Judas, he took his life on his own. And many stories in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, people, God did not take them their life in their best time. He told them, no, 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 two weeks. He received a phone call, he, he overdosed and he died. And unfortunately, a very, very dramatic story. Because he didn't live faithfully. I beg you, even if you have questions, even if you have concerns, even if you have doubts, live faithfully in the Aman of Arabana and put all the questions and we will be faithful also as a church. And I promise you that you will be faithful as a church to reach out and to ask even, uh, I'm not saying that I'm a scholar or, or I have all the answers, but I will do my due diligence to get an answer for the questions that are not or are there. One of the Abunas, uh, Abu Amina, who departed in his early 40s in, uh, in back home in Egypt, he said this. I will repeat it in Arabic and English. Rabbina hayahdak lamma. تكمل رسالتك أو تكون في أحسن حالاتك. لا أقول في عبد الله يخلق لما تخلص فرصتك أو تخلص رسالتك. So God will take you will take you when you consume or uh, use your chances or when you finish your message or your uh, uh, mission in life. God will take your life when you consume or you finish your chances or when you finish and achieve your mission in life. May God give me and give each one of us. You remember the, the things? 
To be real. R for being real. E, examine A, ask. Uh, F, live faithfully and don't let the, the thoughts or the things that is around us to make us live away from God, but continue to live faithfully and have these questions and may God always keep us in His mercy and His knowledge to Him is the glory forever and ever, ever. Live more.